Mach 5, the Roaring Twenties, Section 4, Responses to Racism. The section is starting with blacks in the North. For all of American history, up until the 1920s, American blacks had been heavily concentrated in the states of the former Confederacy. On the map here, in the states in green, uh, from North Carolina and Kentucky down to Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. 90% of American blacks lived in the old cotton belt, in the old Confederate states. This begins to change as a result of the First World War. Factory jobs in the North open up, and by the 1920s, there is huge movement continuing from the war years from the South, where it's Jim Crow and racism, to the North, where there is great and farming and sharecropping, to the North, where there is greater economic opportunity. And the numbers of blacks that leave number in the millions. And they do they move into northern cities. Uh, and you can see from the map that they move into northern cities throughout the United States. Like any immigrant group, blacks in the north tended to stay in neighborhoods of white people. And the term was soon given that black neighborhoods in northern cities, uh, cities were known as ghettos. Ghetto then did not have the same connotation as ghetto has now. All a ghetto was, the word actually comes from Europe, it's where the Jews in European cities lived. Uh, and it was a walled off section of town where the Jews were allowed to live in European cities. The term was given to black neighborhoods in the north, uh, and it did not have the connotation of drugs and crime that it has now. If you say, oh, it's from the ghetto, there's definitely a connotation there that was not there in the 1920s. The most famous of the black ghettos, black neighborhoods, uh, in northern cities, of course, uh, was Harlem in New York City. And Harlem saw a, and there's, here's just a typical street scene from Harlem in the 1920s. It is an, almost an entirely black neighborhood with black businesses, black stores, black schools. It's a black, working class, middle class New York neighborhood. And it attracts, because it's New York City, it attracts the very best and brightest uh, among black Americans in terms of culture, the arts, writing, etc. And this concentration of blacks uh, in Harlem uh, with all these artistic talents and writing talents uh, creates this explosion of creativity uh, that's known as the Harlem Renaissance. And the Harlem Renaissance, um, it, it has a literary component and an artistic uh, component. You're going to be looking at the art for it in one of your assignments for the block. Uh, but its greatest uh, proponent in a literary sense was the poet uh, Langston Hughes. Uh, Langston Hughes was an American poet uh, who was happened to be black, and he wrote about uh, the American experience and the black experience in America in very moving pro uh, poetry. And he became uh, kind of uh, an international superstar, a superstar not only in the United States, uh, but around the world as well. Uh, black music and jazz you know, came up uh, in the 1920s, as we've seen, uh, the Cotton Club in Harlem, and of course, uh, most famously in Harlem, uh, the Apollo Theater, uh, gets its, its beginnings during this Harlem Renaissance in this ghetto, which is not a negative term in the 1920s, uh, in New York City. Um, when blacks moved to the north, let's just go back for a second here. There's Langston Hughes, by the way. When blacks moved north, they faced quite a bit of almost done. Blacks in the north faced a heavy degree of racism uh, in black cities that they were not particularly welcome. Um, Americans in the North, although you know they had fought to end slavery, were not fans of black people in general. Um, and they were pretty much kept. Uh, it was expected that they stayed in their own neighborhoods. Um, segregation was not legal, but it was very often socially enforced. That um, blacks and whites did not date, did not marry. Uh, there was areas of town where blacks really were not welcome to live. Uh, there was you know, jobs that blacks were not welcome to do, uh, except within their, the confines of their own community. In working class neighborhoods, the tension often became violent. 
as now blacks were up in the north competing for the same jobs as whites. Uh, unions did not welcome black members. White working class uh, families did not welcome black competition uh, for their job because they imagined that blacks would work for less money uh, and work longer hours than they would themselves. So uh, in places in the 1920s like St. Louis uh, and in Detroit, there were some pretty serious racial tensions and race riots even in those two cities uh, that usually kind of came up from these working class fears of economic competition. That did not stop the fact that millions of blacks did move north during the 1920s for the economic and social opportunities uh, that the North provided for them, despite uh, the racism of most American citizens.